We have a treat today. Uh, I have a different uh, guest than normal. We have Nals Tomasi uh, here with us. And uh, I discovered Nals because he emailed me and said, hey, I read one of your emails about uh, how in this time of COVID, we're all really naked together. We're seeing parts of ourselves we wouldn't see otherwise. And he said, I actually literally get naked uh, and have shot a TV show about it. And, and it's super interesting. And I, I kind of want to just leave it there and, and let Nels uh, describe what it is he does. He's on French television. Uh, and it's, you know, what we'll do with his permission is, is post one of the shows, uh, one of uh, France 5, which is TV's largest, uh, France's largest TV channel for documentary. Uh, and they've made 32 movies and uh, I'm gonna let you discover who Nuls is on your own. Nuls, welcome to the Bregman Leadership Podcast. Yeah, hello, thank you, Peter. So thank Nuls, you very much. you've spent 427 days and nights on the road. You've traveled more than 25,000 kilometers without money. And, 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 I, and you sent me this video of one of the, um, uh, France 5 TV, which is the TV doc documentary channel um, of one of your shows, and I absolutely loved it. So tell us what it is you've been doing. Yeah. Um, all began after my studies in civil engineering when I was studying in Toulouse in France. Uh, I had been graduated in uh, 2000, and after that, I wanted to go on the road. I didn't want to, to work but I wanted to, to travel and to meet people with this idea uh, that I wanted to go uh, very, very light in my backpack. So the more I was traveling and the more I was getting my backpack very light, so taking off the tent and then the sleeping bag, because I realized that the more I trust the road and the more magic was the, the travel. And after, yeah, so Two tell me, wait, let's let's pause on that a little bit. So so first of all, why did you decide to go camping after a civil engineering degree? I would imagine the thing to do after a civil engineering degree is go get a job in civil engineering. You made yeah. a different choice. What led you to make that different choice? I don't know. Just my my whole body was not uh, ready to go working. I, I was burning to, to go travel and to meet people. And I, I think I wanted to meet myself as well. Mm -hmm. Right. You wanted to discover people. You wanted to discover yourself. So so then you went to this backpack and you started unloading things. Yeah. And tell me, you, you said like because you discovered that there was magic in having less things or having like t – tell. Like what were you just – like, you know, what led you to give up your sleeping bag? What led you to give up your tent? Yeah. When I was traveling in the uh, Caribbean islands, I met on the island a man that was called Ifri. He was like Bob Marley, you know, on the island. He was known right. from everybody, from the poorest man to the richest. And when I met him in the jungle, he was living with no cloth, no money, and he was just singing all day long. And I talked to him and I say, why do you do that? How is it possible? And he said, that's, that's my life. That's my life and that's how I live for, how I've been living for 20 years now. How, how did he survive? How did he get food? Just in the jungle. Oh. Uh, harvesting food. And he was inspiring a lot of people around him. And when I met him, I saw in that person my own desire of mm. getting naked. Right. And I, it gave me a lot of fire and a lot of trust to go in my own way uh, more and more lights on the road. So I want to pause on this moment because I think it's such an important moment. And I, I, I find it's important for myself too. How do you, you so you're, you meet this guy and yeah. you feel touched in a certain way and you say, wow, I could feel something move inside me. I could feel a longing. I could feel a desire. I could feel like something that excites me. And yeah. how do you know to trust 
that longing? How do you, because you're, you're, you know, you've gotten your civil engineering degree and now you're going to do something like kind of crazy. I mean, yeah. from the traditional perspective. So how do you know that that's a voice and a longing that you should trust? I'm curious what happened for you in that moment that said, I'm willing yeah. to take this risk. Yeah. Um, actually, there's, there's a coherence uh, because at the end of my civil engineering studies, uh, I am graduated as a, a construction builder. So I can build ecological houses. That mm -hmm. means houses that has a, a low consumption of energy, right. but a, a high quality of life. Right. So after studies, I want to have the same mindset, but on the road. How can I do travels that consume very low energy, but mm -hmm. uh, that gives a very great experience of life? Right. So when I go on that travel, I am already in that uh, mindset. I right. want to experience uh, something very, very raw. So I can't name it, but I can feel it. Right. So when I see that man, it gives me a, an image a clear image of my own uh, desire. Right. And then so you have I, to trust yourself to follow it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's burning. It's completely clear inside of me. There's no questions about right. it. It's it's not, oh, should I do or, or not? Or it's dangerous. No, it's there's no questions. Wow. So that's my way. I right. recognize it. Great. So what did you do next? So I started to, to I, I kept traveling, but slowly and slowly, I made my backpack lighter and lighter. But I didn't do a, 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 like direction traveling. It was very evolutive. Right. Sorry, you were going out there a little bit. And what you one said day is in two thousand and three, you were going out a little bit. But what you said is. You didn't do one big break. You didn't say, I'm going to go from a full backpack to no backpack at all. What you said was, I don't need this right now. And then I don't need that right now. And slowly you started taking weight yeah. off your back. Yeah. So that was very joyful. It was not, I, I didn't make myself into fears. It was very joyful. And there, there were a lot of playfulness in that, uh, in that game. It was like a game. Right. And in the winter right. of 2009, I decided to go one step forward, which is to travel without money. We are in Quebec. It's minus 40 degrees outside. Wow. So wow. if we don't find a way to sleep at people's house, um, we can't spend the night outside. It's not possible. So at this moment, I, I feel that my faith in humanity has to be like maximum. Right. You have to really and, trust. You have to trust. Yeah. You have to trust the world. You have to trust other people. You have to trust yourself that you're going to go out there and you're going to be okay. Yeah. And, oh, wow. Like, just to remind me, it gives me a lot of um, happiness because when I trusted the, this way of traveling without money in Quebec, minus 40 degrees outside, like, all doors open up. I, I couldn't imagine without uh, living the experience. So you we literally spent... went to Quebec. Yeah. You took off all your clothing. No, no, no. At this stage, we took up money. Money, we all your money. So you took off all your money. I'm jumping the gun here. So you took yeah. off all your money. So you had your clothing, you had warmth, etc. You took off your money. And did you set a goal for yourself? Uh, yeah. We were in Montreal and we, want to, we wanted to go to Halifax, uh -huh. which is the um, east coast of uh, Canada. No, Nova Scotia take, area. Yeah. Before to take a, a boat to go back to Europe because it was the end of our travel. Right. And for one week, we had been traveling like this. And every night, we spent a, a night at people's house. And we had lunches. We had dinners because people invited us to, to eat. So um, it was really beautiful experience for us so when we go back to to europe now we go okay we go to we have to go one step forward which is to travel without money without backpack and without clothes 
at so, least to stop the travel like so this is truly trusting yourself the world and other people which says yeah. you're going to literally get dropped in the woods somewhere with yeah. nothing except you have cameras yeah. at least for the show you have cameras at no, that no, point, because no. at, at, it was not a show it was our life <laughs> your life yeah it was an, an experience so you just drop yourselves naked with zero with nothing yeah. And then say, and with a goal at that point, or just to say, can we travel a little bit like this? Yeah. So I, I, I called a friend and I said, hey, um, because I knew he was interested in uh, minimalism as well in certain form of minimalism in traveling. And I said, will you be okay to travel with me without money and without backpack? He said, yeah, but we should start in the, in the forest. And I said, yeah. And then we should stop naked. And he said, yeah. And we were like excited and we say, let's go to Paris in discotheque um, in a red convertible uh, wear with a, a suit. A suit, um, a suit. So a suit, you said, yes. okay, so here's the challenge. We're going to go naked in the woods. Our goal is to end up in Paris in a suit in a red convertible. Yeah. Can we make it happen? Yeah, because we say we want to reach two opposites, you know, like the wild man and the uh, modern man, the, right, uh, the right. of white man and modern man. Right. And said, if we can reach those two, if we can connect those two archetypes of uh, humanity, then we will, this travel will have a, a value because that means that uh, we will be able to travel in this humanity from the whiteness to the modernity. So I want to, I want to pause for a second because I think when I think about, you know, like this is a, this is about leadership. This podcast itself is about the Bregman Leadership Podcast. And we talk with, you know, leaders and organizations. And and and, and I, I speak to so many leaders who are frustrated with the constraints that they have. They don't have the money. They don't have the budget that they want in order to make their plans happen. They, you know, they struggle with competition. They, and, and, and what you're saying, it, you're, you're stepping out of that, construct out of that paradigm completely and yeah. you're saying you know it's like it's about fun it's about trust it's about trying something new it may or may not work now you don't necessarily have you know an organization of people you have to pay and profitability and shareholders and blah 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 but there's something really really important that has been lost i speak to so many entrepreneurs who start out exactly like you started out, saying, hey, I've got this idea, and let's have fun, and let's do something cool, and I'm gonna do it with a friend, and let's see if we could pull this off. And then 10 years down the road, they're saddled with a backpack that is heavier than they can carry, in which they're not having very much more fun, and they have way more money than they had beforehand, but they seem to have much less joy of life. And yeah. and I and I'm just I'm thinking of that because you're starting out in this place that that has the energy of an early entrepreneur. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. And yeah, thank you for uh, for this sharing because it, it, it touches me at, at a place where I remind I, I remember when we started uh, with my friend Moots naked without money two day after the the start we were like okay man. We have to go to Paris to find a red convertible. How are we going to do? We have to find money. So we should uh, find a work and maybe work for one or two days to have money and then to, to uh, borrow this red convertible. And every time we saw ourselves shifting in the old pattern. Right. And pose. We are not here for that. Right. That pattern, we know it. You work, you earn money, and you go to you go. Now, what we want to experience is something else. Right. And every time one of one of the us were falling into the fears, the other were like, right, right, right. trust. Let's trust. Let's trust. Right. And the story is great because when we arrived in Paris, so we had the suit, someone gave it to us, and we were looking for this red convertible. And we were like, how are we going to be? We have no money. And we say, okay, let's trust, let's trust, let's trust. And at one point, there were this red tuk-tuk 
convertible that came to us. You know the tuk-tuk? No, what's a tuk-tuk? A taxi in, in India. Oh, like, um, uh, like with a bicycle, like, a, or, or like a half yeah. motorcycle, half a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came to, but it was convertible. And the, the driver that was a woman, um, looked at us and she was curious and said, what you, you're not normal guys. So what are you doing here? And we explained her, uh, the, the dream, we explained her our dream and she said, okay. Tonight, I am your personal driver. I yeah. am completely available for you. Wow. So we had the whole evening in the Red Comfortable in, uh, in Paris and then find our way to the discotheque. But it was more symbolic. Right. For us, we say, okay, five, years, five days ago, we were naked in the woods and we had traveled for 500 kilometers hitchhiking on trucks on cars, airplane, trains. And here we are in Paris. We were like, like a uh, drug. It, it was right. like a drug, but everything is possible. Right. So we end up in Paris and we had a little camera with which we, we, we have taken some uh, pictures and videos. And after that, we set up um, a little movie of five minutes and we sent it to uh, a TV channel. And they say, that's brilliant. Let's make movies together. So that was 10 years ago. And today we had um, uh, make, we had made uh, 32 movies mm -hmm. of that experience. And yeah, and so, and um, I'm curious about, and maybe we're jumping ahead very quickly, but I'm curious about like, so you have this thing you do that's super fun and it's yeah. an experiment and it's trusting yeah. the world. And, yeah. and it's also very important, I think, from what you've described, but tell me if this is right, Nels, is that you, you have a goal, but you can't think, you can't plan too far in advance. Meaning you have yeah. this thing you want to go to, but you don't, you don't know here are the 30 steps that are going to get me there. Like, that's the adventure. The adventure is, I don't know how I'm going to get from here. Oh, we have an ocean to cross. How am I going to cross the ocean? I don't know how I'm going to cross the ocean. Let's go to the edge of the ocean and see if anyone has a boat. Like, you're, you're not, you're, um, in, and I'm going to use negative moral language here to mean a positive thing. You're totally irresponsible about your like the the planning of your approach and yet you're completely um uh faith driven believing that yeah. you know if we take the next step and we're open and we're willing that we'll find the step after that we don't have to plan it all out yeah i'm curious when you started making movies if that changed because now you're working for a TV channel, you're making movies, you have a product you have to get out. Like, yeah. how do you manage to maintain that joie de vivre and that sort of free spirit when you have, you know, deadlines and, you know, people that you're having to deliver a product to at the end? Do you understand my question? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a beautiful question. Uh, because it was my own question as well. When we first began to do movies about it, my thoughts, my belief were, oh, when we're going to shoot that, miracles are going to disappear. Mm -hmm. Because miracles, they don't like to be trapped into a camera. Uh, they don't like business. It's free. Miracles are free. But the thing is that um, the first travel we made, we started in a cave in Drome which is in southeast of France, uh -huh. and we had to make a fire to survive during the night. So I've learned a technique of uh, friction, mm -hmm. of wood friction, but it didn't work. There was a lot of steam, but there were no fire. Right. So uh, as the sun was setting and the temperature was getting lower and lower, we say, whoa, we really need to get some leaves to make cover for us. But it was very freezing cold, like zero degree. Right. After um, five minutes of research of leaves, Moots found an object on the ground, but we are in the forest, lost in the middle of nowhere. He said, Nance, 
I found a brigade, a lighter. <laughs> and out, of, that, out of nowhere. It's just random. Random. And it was working. And we couldn't even uh, shoot that sequence, that, uh, that moment, because I said nobody will, will believe us. Right. They wouldn't believe you. They would say, well, it was planted or it was right. Yeah. So I was, I was uh, like kind of relieved that, oh, yeah, miracles is still happening, even though there's pressure, even though there's um, production company, TV channel and everything. And my analyze is that as we enter into those travels naked, it's like a ritual. And in that ritual, it makes us like uh, completely available to, to the travel. Right. And after 10 years of travel, I can say today, like uh, miracle still um, happens and joy is still here and fire and trust. But I, I, for me, it's important to stop naked. Every right. time, every time, because it's like if you take off all your comfort zone and all the the thing that you you think you know, but you know nothing actually. And yeah, and today, even today after ten years, sometimes I cry before to to go naked because I'm afraid because I say, oh my comfort zone, it's I don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes it's cold. Or sometimes I'm afraid of how people are going to react. So fortunately, we are two with my friend. We support each other. This is the first rule of our, of our work together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then after we trust. Um, there's something else I noticed when I was watching the the um, episode that you sent me, and I, I and it's left me wanting to watch more episodes. But I noticed and was very touched by the fact that while you start out naked. You never took anything from anybody without giving them something back. That yeah. there was, it was not a required transaction. You weren't buying something with something else, but people were being generous with you and you were finding ways, even when you had nothing, to be generous back with them. Maybe you would cook them a meal and, and, and actually, and, and, and there was one person who was very negative and in, in the show that I showed you, yeah. he, that, that you showed me, he was, he actually helped you to find a place to stay at night, but he was just such a pessimist and so negative about people and so negative about life and everybody's terrible. And, and at that point you said, you know, I'm going to, what I'm going to try to do is see if he'll come with us. And, to, you know, and I was thinking, oh, I would want to just get away from him. But you, your view was, let me bring him in and see if he could sort of be part of the miracle of our life and, and, and see what we're doing. Do you want to describe that? And I'm curious about the ethic of giving back as in, you know, of, of, of a willingness to take and a willingness to give. Yeah. 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 Of course you can imagine after 10 years of uh, traveling like this, there is something very heavy to keep. If it's only one way, if we only receive, right. it's too heavy to keep ourselves. So we really felt like we bodily felt the need of giving back. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there were this call of giving because it gave us a sense of uh, balance. Right. So we felt that for our health, we needed to give back. And so we invented some um, presents made of papers like origamis some songs we learn how to 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 cook as you said or to give um yeah to give services or anything that we could uh, that gave us the opportunity to share our energy as well for with people right to share love. that that felt very important as i was watching that felt important both in terms of the joie de vivre in terms of like living life in an adventure in an exciting way and also, you know, about this trust thing, like to trust that not only are, will people be generous with us, but even naked, we have value to give to other people that will be treasured by them. Sure. Even if it's in the experience of helping us and engaging yeah. with us, that feels like it's an important part of the story. 
yeah, yeah. What we discovered uh, in our adventure is that money is one way to give, but it's not the only one. There's uh, many ways to 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 make an exchange between people, and sometimes those other ways are are more are more um, adapted to the situation. Sometimes people do not need money; they need uh, love, they need attention, they need care. Sometimes they feel so grateful just because we are here for half an hour listening to their story. Right. Sometimes they say, right. the first time I feel listened to. And this is the most precious present for them. Or sometimes people, they, 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 they are happy to, to share a meal. In France, 1% of the 10 feel lonely with, a, with a, the studies. 1% of the 10. So this is... Um, great gifts sometimes that you can offer to someone just to share time with him. Right. So, yeah, we explored all those different ways to, to give back. And we, we felt like there's a, a great richness uh, beside money. What are some of the lessons that you would want to share with leaders in companies and in organizations from what you've learned over the past 10 years? Well, what I'm very happy to share with those, um, those travels is uh, to not forget the, the playfulness and the innocence in which we enter into a new project or into a dream. Because I, I, today I really trust the power of getting in touch with that longing, with that uh, impulsion that uh, drives us into a dream or whatever. And to stay here, yeah. This is for me the the a great um, how do you say in English uh, like gas oil or, or uh, say it in French. Um, uh, carburant. 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 I don't know. <laughs> I thought yeah, I might. Pull into your car, you know. Well, it's a great energy. Right. It's a great energy right. to be connected with. And I really trust that uh, this energy has uh, its own intelligence to, to drive us on the way. So we're, we're, I don't know exactly when this will air, but we're talking in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an economic crisis, in the middle of a time when there's a lot of fear, when people are afraid for themselves and their families and their health, where people are afraid for their businesses and their money and, right? And... I'm curious about how at the same time, and you have felt afraid, you talked about feeling afraid, how yeah. at the same time as you feel fear and afraid, you could still access the playfulness. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a great question today. Uh, for me, one, um, one, one of the challenges I, I, I see in that uh, situation of pandemic is that it brings uh, distances between people. And right. so this, this right. tendency to go alone, to stay at home. But uh, I want to, to remind myself that uh, having distances for the pandemic do not mean uh, staying lonely uh, inside of us. For me, the, I activate the, the playfulness with uh, the relationship talking, listening to the other, being curious with the other, being authentic with oneself. This brings something that, for me, actually brings me back to the, to the playfulness and to the heart. But playfulness for me, the home of playfulness is in the heart. And I connect with my heart mostly in the relationship with authenticity and, and attention. And let me ask you a question, Nels, because as you're speaking, I'm thinking... I wonder whether there's something else also, which is there is playfulness in the risks that you take. And they're, they're generally risks, like for the most part, you know you're going to survive. Like you're not risking your life for the most part. Maybe, maybe you are, maybe I'm wrong. But it feels like you're taking a risk and it's kind of like, the, like, like a kid-like mentality when you go, I wonder what would happen if, I wonder what would happen if I did this. I wonder what would happen. And it's that you're 
it's it's it it feels to me like there's something very important that you're saying about the relationship, but also there's something very important you're saying about the imagination and the willingness to dream and to create and to take some risks to follow through on that without the heaviness or the seriousness of this had better work, but with both a certain trust and an openness and a curiosity to see what happens if dot dot dot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for me, it requires two skills for that. The first one is to dare to dream, mm -hmm. like it's to, uh, uh, to free your imagination. For me, it, ha it happened when I was a child, you know, with my father. He, he brought me very often under the sky and looking at the stars and saying each time we saw um, uh, a star, you know, like this, like a starving star, mm -hmm. uh, saying, make a, a wish. A shooting star shooting star like make a wish and then we were going in the fields looking for the four leaves clover and uh -huh. if it was looking for one or finding one say make a wish make a wish so for from very child i learned how to to make wishes and to allow myself to dream so that's that's i find it's important and the other skill important for me is to be able to celebrate when you reach your dream but also be able to to more to um, how to say uh, you know when you like to grieve to grieve mm -hmm. when you don't success right like capacity to to grieve to mourn and to be able to find some supports around and supports inside then the more I am able to mourn my my dreams when they are not realized the more I feel. Um, secure inside and say okay because the fear is not to fail the the dream the fear is not to be able to handle the emotional intensity that's and when amazing I... that's so... amazing it's like we, we don't fear and I, I i mean i don't know if you know this but my last book was leading with emotional courage the willingness to feel things and what you're saying is which i agree 100 percent with is that we don't fear failure we fear what we will feel when we fail. And if we're willing exactly. to feel all of that, then we could fail. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I can't talk about all of this project without talking of my family, my friends, that I know I have support. If I fail in my project, in my dreams, I know that they are here and then I can maybe cry or maybe express myself or what I feel. And it's okay. I will. There's something else that will uh, burn from that, that will uh, start again from that. You know. I and love I, that. I, I, sacred art that we have forgotten in our culture, the sacred art of of grieving, right. and it's beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, it's beautiful to celebrate, and it's beautiful to grieve when it happens. Right. It's true. We really like. You're, you're speaking to an expansiveness of facing life, of living life, an expansiveness. And we, um, you know, we learn over time, I think, to get more and more and more narrow. And like yeah. we want we want the good things and not the bad things. And we want the money and not the poverty. And we want the, and and what you're saying is it's all life and it's all beautiful. And it's and and if we're not afraid of of either one side or the other side, then we can li live fully into all of who we are as people. Yeah, yeah. My like the the, the thought the, the thought I have when you're speaking is that if you want to open up all the possibilities of your life, you have to be able to receive all the possibility the possibilities of the life as well. Right. So I love like, that, Nels. I love that, and it's not just a uh, you know, it's not just an empty philosophical approach to life it's one you live and it's also one that you've I, I'm, I'm sure you've had failures I know you've had successes but it's one that you've continued to live in the context of working on significant projects that have been brought to fruition so you're not um, you're not meditating on all of this and not moving forward you're you're um, living this life in a way that's creating value out in the world and 
and still yeah. maintaining the same kind of openness, which I, I don't know, I feel like I'm not articulating this so well, but I, I think it's, it's, um, it's like one thing for someone in college to say, wouldn't this be an amazing way to live idealistically? And it's another to say, it might be an ideal, but it's also very livable. And like, here I am, I'm a TV star. I'm a French TV star. And I've got, you know, we've got a TV show and we've done multiple seasons. And, and this is, this is the philosophy of life that I live in the context of the things that I've achieved. It's not giving up one for the other. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, it. One, one thing today that I celebrate is that after seven years of doing that uh, TV program, a friend of mine, which is called Amanda, came to see me and said, you know, I just lost my, my, ch my child. Uh, he was uh, one year old. Oh. And today I feel completely lost. And I'm not sure I will be able to cross this um, experience of loss. And she said, I want you to bring me in, in a travel and to meet people that can inspire me uh, because they lost someone dear, uh, maybe a child. They can give me the, the trust that it's possible not only to, to, to cross this experience, but only to grow from it. Right. So we decided to go on the travel together and she asked, to make a movie of it because she said if it can help me maybe it will help other people that are mm -hmm. like completely lost in the loss so we made a movie out of that but i was <laughs> i came say okay i do what you want because i want really to to help you but let's see. and this this movie had been uh, shown in many many cinema uh, it had been a, a big, 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 big uh, movie in France. And so proud of it, uh, so proud of Amanda that in the pain, in the core of the pain that she found the, the courage to say, I want to help myself and to help others. And she, she, she went to ask support from her friends. And now, now we made a beautiful um, a movie that helped a lot of people here in France. It's amazing. So, it's amazing. Yeah, and and what's amazing about it is it, it used some of what you know, but you also said, like, I, I don't know, like you're willing to be in the space of not knowing and to have that be yeah. the next adventure that hopefully can help people. I love yeah. it. It's a place, you know, place of not knowing is not a place that people are very comfortable with often. Like we like... I was just reading a book. I'm, I'm going to have someone on my podcast. But one one of the things that he wrote is what's the difference between dreams and priorities is dreams are long term desires without a plan or a deadline. Priorities are dreams that you're willing to sacrifice for that you have to turn into a plan with a deadline. And and I think that I think you're saying something very different in a sense, which is, you know, like dream like it's it's actually important in some ways not to have figured it all out planning and having a deadline and i mean there's some element of planning a deadline that's useful but there's some element when we plan everything out where we plan the magic and the potential out of something that otherwise could be really great yeah i love it Nels. yeah when i yeah go ahead yeah no go ahead yeah, yeah. i say i will say yeah when i there are different kind of dreams, uh, but uh, the dreams I'm talking about is, are the dreams that uh, just the fact, the very fact of dreaming make you feel very alive. And it's already like uh, the dream is already rich and realized as you feel it like wholly in your body. And those kind of dreams, uh, it, is, it is that kind of dream that I'm talking about. Do you have any advice? We're, we're just wrapping up here, but do you have any advice for people about how to open up to their dreams? A lot of times we have dreams and we shut them down because they're a little scary. So, it, and maybe you, maybe you haven't had this experience, but I'm curious for people who might have dreams, but they even have a hard time admitting to themselves what their <laughs> dreams are because they could be scary. Any advice about opening yourself up to your dreams? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my advice is to, um, to 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 be to be very aware about the little dreams of every day. You know, 
like everything that makes you feel uh, happy and joyful in your body. So the first advice is to keep attention to how do you feel inside of you mm -hmm. and to be attention with the, the joy and happiness and everything that um, resonates with those uh, those feelings of expansion, of joy, uh, to be, yeah, to be aware of that and try it sometimes just to do a little step towards this kind of little dream that you can follow every day. And it's like a muscle. The more you listen to it and the more you listen to your inner joy and the, the more you listen to your to yourself, actually, and the more you're able then to trust yourself to follow your big dream of life. I love it. We have been speaking with Nals Tomasi. He, uh, well, you've, you, you know what he's been doing, but he's been traveling for the last 10 years. He's been following his dreams. He's uh, created uh, a TV series. Uh, they've made 32 movies. And, and, and Nals, you're such a beautiful example of, of exactly what you've just described, taking steps one by one, starting with nothing to build up uh, something that's really beautiful, but then not resting on that, continuing to step back, continuing to go back to where you started naked and start again. And, and it's this, you know, I remember reading uh, a, um, an article about this woman who's a Chinese billionaire. She lives in China. She's a billionaire. She's, you know, maybe the richest woman in China. I can't, I can't remember what this was about 10 years ago. But I remember reading in the article as she described what it was like to start her company living in a sleeping bag in one room and the excitement with which she described that and, and the longing that this billionaire who has everything that she could possibly need, the longing that she had for that moment of being in the sleeping bag by herself in a room you know, with the dream of starting something. And, yeah. and I think we forget that the dream is sometimes more important than the accomplishment of the dream. That it's like we accomplish it and then we stop dreaming. And then that becomes a block to really living life so fully. And so I so appreciate you yeah. reminding us of that. Oh, thank you, Peter. It was, uh, I love your curiosity as well. And thank you for Make me, making me able to share those stories with you in uh, New York and America because uh, this is my um, this is my longing to share my stories and to inspire maybe people as I have been inspired by many people here in France and all the generosity I've met on the road. I want to say that yeah, it exists today and it has to be known. That's great. Thank I'm you so much. I'm so happy you've been on the podcast. Thank you for coming, Nels.